Welcome to my science tutorial. In this video, we'll be talking about mechanism of hydrolysis. In a previous video, we talked about hydration and hydrolysis. If you haven't seen that yet, you can check our playlist for that. Now, in this particular one, we want to look at the steps involved when we have to show the hydrolysis of a particular salt. Okay. Now, just a quick reminder, in the previous video, we talked about We talk about hydration. And we talk about hydrolysis. All right, we said that hydration is when we have a gaseous ion that gets coordinated by a sheet of water molecule. Okay, now we said hydrolysis. We have the water, we have the ion from maybe a particular salt in water and the effect of it is that we either going to have a hydroxide ion OH minus or we have H3O plus ion which will in turn cause alkalinity or acidity in this case okay so we need to talk about that and then we also said that we mentioned that we have two types of hydrolysis. We have cation hydrolysis and then we also have anion hydrolysis. Cation hydrolysis and anion hydrolysis. Now we said that this one will result in acidic solution. And this one will result in alkaline solution or basic solution. Okay, all right. And then we look at the various type of salts that will give us this, okay? If you remember, we'll talk about that. And then we also talk about the fact that we talk about the fact that not all ions undergo hydrolysis we mentioned that when we have a salt that is formed from a strong acid and a strong base so a strong acid plus a strong base When this gives us a salt, it will, that salt will not undergo hydrolysis in solution. So for example, when we take hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, this will give us sodium chloride, NaCl, and water. Okay. Now we said that this one, this salt, sodium, will associate to give us sodium plus and Cl minus, and this will not undergo hydrolysis. The chloride ion cannot undergo hydrolysis, neither would the sodium plus because these are from strong acids and bases, okay? So in short, we did say that the strong bases are hydroxides of group one and group two metals, so strong bases. We said they are oxides of hydroxides of group one and two and two metals. Okay. Now the strong acids, strong acids. We mentioned some example. We mentioned HCl. We we'll mention H I H B R. We also mention H two S O four H N O three H C L O four. Now these are some examples of strong acids. So anytime we have a salt that is formed from 
either of any of these acids and any hydrous are from group 1 or group 2 is to form salts that will not undergo hydrolysis okay all right now so let's take a look at what cation hydrolysis is so what is cation hydrolysis we said this one occurs when we have the cation from a salt undergoing the hydrolysis okay the cation from a salt undergoing the hydrolysis and usually when we have a salt the cation comes from the base and the anion comes from the acid okay this one takes three steps so we have three steps involved in this one the first one is the dissociation the second one is the hydration and the third one is a hydrolysis hydrolysis so these are the steps involved in cation hydrolysis and of course the resulting solution resultant solution will be acidic okay so this is cation hydrolysis now what are the steps involved let's take an example and look at that so speak a white now let's take a salt like copper sulfate copper sulfate now the first thing that will happen when this is in water is that it will dissociate to give us copper 2 plus and then sulfate anion SO4 2 minus so this is going to be aqueous because it is dissolved in water okay so this step is what is known as dissociation this is our dissociation step and then the next thing that will happen is that the copper copper 2 plus will get hydrated so copper 2 plus will be surrounded by four moles of water molecule okay and this will form a complex CuH2O4 and the charge 2 plus don't forget the charge 2 plus okay and this is going to be aqueous this is liquid and this is aqueous okay now i know you are wondering why this is for now it is important to know the coordination number of this these metals okay so you need to know some of them off head but don't worry if you can't keep it off head you can represent it using an x so when you come here you have to write an x to show that you have x moles of water that coordinates this particular cation and when you come here, you also indicate that you are using X, X moles of water. Okay. So this stage is what is known as hydration. Now, the last thing that will happen is the hydrolysis. So what to get hydrolyzed? It is this complex that to get hydrolyzed. So we have copper, open a square bracket, and then we have the water, H2O, 4, and a 2 plus. We get hydrolyzed. Now we take a water molecule. And what will be the effect on this? Now what is going to happen is that because this is a cation, now the water molecules we have here are four. We have four water molecules. Now one of them will donate a proton to water. And when that happens, it will be left with three water molecules. Okay? So we'll write that as copper with H2O3 and then what happens to the water that donates the proton? It will be left with hydroxide anion. Okay, hydroxide anion. Now this is supposed to carry a negative charge here. But remember that we have two plus on the copper. Okay, we have two plus on the complex. So the negative charge will cancel out one of the charge. And so what will be left here will be a plus. Now the water that receives the proton or the hydrogen become becomes h3o plus so the fact that we have this in the solution means that the solution is going to be acidic okay now this stage is called the hydrolysis so this is the hydrolysis stage
So the fact that we have H2O plus in solution is telling us that anytime we have cation hydrolysis, the resulting solution becomes acidic, okay? Now, let's take another example. Let's take aluminum, aluminum trichloride. You can pause the video and try this out. Now, the first thing that will happen is the dissociation. So we have AlCl3 dissociating to give us Al3+, plus, and then we'll have Cl-3, minus, Cl-, minus, and all this is going to be aqueous. All right, so the next thing that will happen is the hydration. Now we'll take the ion Al3+, plus, and then it gets coordinated by six moles of water and forms a complex. What's a bit of complex? Open a square bracket, Al, into bracket H2O6, and then we have three plus here. Okay, so this one is a dissociation. And this one is the hydra is the hydration. This is the hydration. And then the last thing that will happen is the hydrolysis. Okay. So Al H two O six close the square brackets three plus and then we hydrolyze it with water. And then what happens? Now we'll have Al H2O. Remember one of the water molecules will donate a proton, so it will be left with five. Five, and then we'll have OH. Let's close the square bracket. And then one of the charge here will be balanced. So we'll have two plus with, in addition, we'll have H3O plus in the solution, making it acidic. Now, actually, when you are doing the hydrolysis, the goal here is to neutralize the charge on the, on the aluminum hexahydrate, okay? So what happened is that we we'll need to introduce equal number of water molecules that to take away the charge so but the goal is to show that this is going to be acidic so you can you can do this or you can also indicate you can also indicate that you are adding three moles of water h2o to this complex al h2o six and that the resulting solution the result will be al h2o three and it will have oh three okay by this time the charge or the charge will be neutralized by the water and so we'll have three moles of H3O plus, okay? So this is what we have as a result of the hydrolysis, okay? Now, anion hydrolysis, anion hydrolysis proceeds through three steps, proceeds through three steps. Okay, now the first one, the first one is dissociation. And the second one is hydrolysis. So it proceeds through only two steps, sorry, only two steps, okay? Now let's take an example and look at it. So let's take sodium ethanol CH3COONA, 
So if you look at this, this is a salt that is formed from a weak acid and a strong base. So the weak acid is ethanoic acid and a strong base is sodium hydroxide. So we can see the sodium here and the anion from the acid, ethanoic acid. So this is aqueous. It will dissociate and give us CH3COO minus aqueous and Na plus. And we know that sodium plus will not undergo hydrolysis because it is from a strong base. So what will happen here is that the anion will get hydrolyzed. So this is the dissociation. So the anion ethanoid CH3COO minus in the presence of water will get hydrolyzed by picking the proton from the water molecule it will form ethanoic acid. And what will be left in the solution will be OH minus. So the fact that we have OH minus in the solution means that the solution will be basic. Okay, the solution will be basic. And this is our hydrolysis. So you find out that this step is much simpler compared to the cation hydrolysis and the resulting solution is basic. Solution becomes basic. Okay, now let's take another example. You can pause the video and try sodium sulfide, Na2S, okay? Now what happens to sodium sulfide? Sodium sulfide will dissociate to give us two moles of sodium plus and sulfide S2 minus and this will all be aqueous. This is aqueous. Now again sodium will not undergo hydrolysis so we'll take the anion which is sulfide. So we have sulfide S2 minus to undergo hydrolysis with water H2O liquid. And then we'll have HS, HS minus and then OH minus aqueous, aqueous. And this also is aqueous. Okay, so this is our dissociation. And this is our hydrolysis. Okay, two steps involved. We have OH minus in the solution, the solution becomes basic. So this is quite simple. Okay, quite simple. Anion hydrolysis. All right. Now, let's look at this question. This question says that given 0.1 molar aqueous solution of ammonium chloride and ammonium ethanol, state and explain which of them you would expect to, to have the lower pH. Okay, that's what it's supposed to be, to have the lower pH. So what we'll do is to try to look at the behavior of these two salts in water. So when we take ammonium chloride, NH4Cl, when it's in water, it will dissociate to give us NH4 plus and Cl minus. All right, so NH4 plus, we'll get when I go hydrolysis with water, and then we'll have NH3 plus H3O plus, okay? H3O plus. This, of course, aqueous liquid and aqueous. All right, so that is it. With the ammonium chloride solution, what is going to happen is that the pH will come down because we are producing excess acid. So let's say this one 
when we take when we calculate the pH from this, we have a particular pH. But then as a result of cation hydrolysis, the pH will come down because you know that when it comes to acid, pH will come down. Now what will happen with the ammonium ethanoid? CH3, COO, and H4. So what will happen is that this also will dissociate to give us CH3, C O O minus plus N. This is N, N H four plus all aqueous. Now you notice that this is a salt that is formed from a weak acid and a weak base. So the weak acid is ethanoic acid and the weak base is ammonia. Okay. So what will happen is that both the anion and the cation that is produced will undergo hydrolysis. So in the first, in the, let's take the cation, NH4 plus, it will get hydrolyzed with water, H2O, and this will give us NH3, and then we'll have H3, O plus all aqueous. Okay, so this is what will happen. We have the cation undergoing the hydrolysis and giving us H3O plus, which is supposed to make the solution acidic. Okay, then the anion will also undergo hydrolysis CH. 3COO minus with H2O will give us CH3COOH plus OH minus. Now all these are aqueous. Aqueous. Now we have OH minus hydroxide in the solution, which is supposed to make the solution basic. So you notice that both the anion and the cation are trying to make the solution either basic or acidic, but however, it's going to be neutral because since we have H3O plus in the solution, as well as OH minus in the solution, this will just give us two moles of water, okay? So at the end of the day, we'll say that the solution remains neutral. So when we are talking about, when we talk about a salt from a weak acid and a weak base, it gives us a neutral solution. However, if it is from, um, when it, if we have the salt from a weak acid and a strong base, we're going to have cation hydrolysis, which will give us, um, which will give us an effect either the solution becoming acidic or basic. Okay, so if you like this video, remember to like it, subscribe, and also share with your friends. Thank you.